Today I'm joined by Ritzler, Polymars, and Ivy Sly. The art kit we'll be using is the Roguelike by Bacteria. The rules are, you have 48 non-consecutive hours to make a game, you can use any royalty-free fonts, music, and sound effects, and you must use the art kit for your game's visuals, but you're free to be as creative as you want with how you use it. Let's begin. Hey, I'm Ritz. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted out of this asset pack, uh, but one thing that stuck out to me was there was a lot of food. Uh, so, I thought making some kind of cooking game could be neat. And uh, I love making platformers, so hey, cooking platformer it is. Jump around, collect ingredients, toss them in a pot. It'd be pretty doable. I uh, cracked open a new Unreal project and scrubbed all the extra stuff out of the first person controller. I just needed the basic physics and collision. Uh, from there, I actually made a billboarded sprite first. Uh, I needed that before I could do a lot of stuff. Then I made a generic pickup object that you could hold and throw and bounce around a little and let it pretend it's different objects via a data table. And then I picked out the objects I thought would be fun. Um, I wanted a few slots for picking up items, uh, then made the pot for you to toss them in, which ended up being more of a walk and the menu to tell you what you needed. Uh, cool. Now I just needed a basic mob to drop everything. Um, they just need to be able to move around a little bit and have different sprites, nothing too crazy. Uh, you turn them all into food drop by just hitting them with rocks, I decided, which is varying levels of ridiculous. Uh, not everything needed to come from mobs, though. Uh, a few ingredients would just grow out of the ground, which I was able to more or less repurpose for the mob spawners, and after that, woo! Uh, I made some pretty basic movement this time around. Slide, jump, double jump, slide jump. It's definitely a lot easier to do without a character you need to animate, but it's a lot less fun to me. Either way, now I can do the level. Um, I made a very loose doodle of the map and the zones it would have to house for all the mobs and drops. Uh, then I started doing a little bit of, in the, of it in engine for scale, uh, and then transitioned back to Blender to finish it off. Between the variety of environment tiles and the way the topology was constructed, I, I didn't think it would look very good to use the sprites on the whole thing, so I mostly just ended up using them for uh, spots of detail and used flat colors for the rest. Uh, when I got back into Unreal, I added a basic distance blend too, because uh, it just looked really uh, flat without it. It really just needed some kind of depth cue. Once it was back in engine, I placed all the spawners, and from there it was just tweaking numbers, hooking everything together, and adding some polish. I made some basic VFX with the sprites of the bass, used BFXR for all the sounds, and some royalty free jazz for the soundtrack, because hey, why not? While it was originally supposed to be cooking, it kind of ended up, due to the kinds of stuff you were getting, I thought it'd be more fitting if you were actually making some kind of witch's brew. Um, so I decided you were actually making uh, some kind of vile potion in a cauldron, uh, and you were working for uh, this witch who lived in the woods and would, would be really angry if you didn't do what she said. Um, so it ended up being a witch's walk instead of some cooking thing. Uh, it's close enough though, right? You've gotten a job with the witch of the woods. Double jump, slide, and slide jump. Collect ingredients by throwing rocks at things, then bring the ingredients back to the witch's walk. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have a 3D platformer on our hands. How do you pick up? E to pick up a carrot and a crab. Where? Okay, you have to throw. Uh, okay, click click to throw. Oh, and you get extra time. Okay, that, that's good. I'm not sure what I can and can't throw rocks at. So, if you throw a rock at a thing. All right. It's a little grotesque. I really like the use of the assets to create like, all these different biomes and areas. It's pretty neat. Where am I going to find a crab? This is real cute. This is a... I wasn't so sure these assets would work in 3D, but they totally do. And then there's like, there's no shadows, but it's the fog kind of adds some depth to everything. So I really need to find a crab. It's fun to figure out where certain things are, because there's certain things you see and it's like, wait, where do I get that? Like it's a drumstick, what gives that? And because the other things just exactly match what you're looking for, but then other things are like, what is that? And then you have to kind of guess which creature is going to drop that and go hunt it down. And then you kind of just naturally explore the area. Okay, so you throw the rock at the crab and it drops a collectible crab. And you can put the collectible crab in the witch walk in the next 10 seconds. Go, go, go. Oh shit, I have seven seconds. There's no way. I need some more time. I'm going to run out. Come back here. Okay, so you can like slide jump. That's cool. Double jump. <laughs> it's kind of funny all the movement options. I really like how the 
the assets work in this in this context. Because when I was looking at them, I, I totally thought, you know, like I have to make a tile-based roguelike with this. Oh, yeah, this totally works. I love it. Okay, now we need cheese. I have actually no idea how to get cheese. Cheese. All right, so cheese is the hard one. Cheese, 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 cheese. I have no idea how to find cheese. Where's the cheese? What could drop cheese? Are there like cows? I need to find some cows, maybe? Maybe it's these guys. Oh my god. That's delightful. So I have to kill a cheese man, which drops cheese. Oh, they actually do. What? Okay. What? Okay. And then I also need to kill this newt over here. Oh, these guys suck. There we go. Give me my cheese. Those, those are cheese man. Oh, cheese. The password to download this game on itch. I don't know if I can say this. I mean, it could be cut out. The top secret game download is cheese man. And I think it was like a hint. That's like a hint. Uh, let's see. Two chickens and a cheese. And the apple. I don't. Oh, the trees probably dropped apples. That's so clever. <laughs> this game. This game. This game is amazing. I forgot. I have like multiple inventory slots. Oh, and the scroll wheel. Dang, this game is so polished. I love it. I wish I could just switch my inventory, but I guess it's kind of a neat way to have inventory management. Where you have to like. You can only use whatever's front in your inventory. The movement in this is so fun. I feel like I could just run around in this game for hours. So I can do like a dash somehow. I'm not sure how this works. Okay, that's pretty fast. I guess that's the optimal way to travel. It's a movement shooter collectathon is kind of a weird concept. That's pretty fun though, but I, I do wish there was some kind of like, I don't know, instead of just the timer. I mean, the timer is fun too as a challenge, but it would be neat to have some kind of like story behind each recipe or something. Nothing complicated, but know who I'm collecting for and why or something. Did that work? No, okay, I'm not, I'm not like a basketball player. I don't know what I thought I was doing there. Can I make it from here? Yeah, there we go. Okay, that gives me enough time. I need cheese. I don't know where the cheese is. I'm sorry, Ritz. Now nah, I'm a newt. Okay, the cheeses come from the cheese men, from the tiny cheese horses inside. <gasps> I just put the rock inside the witch walk. I'm such an idiot. Oh, I think I had the recipe actually. It landed at the last second. All right, I made it to 20. Oh yeah, it went up by one. We were aiming for five and we got to eight. So I, I can't complain. I guess I would have liked some kind of like story or something to it. If it like opened up new areas as you played and I don't know, reached milestones, that would be really fun. It was so creative, both in the use of the 2D sprites in a 3D environment. That was so cool to see. And also the gameplay was so creative. It was so fun to figure out how to get the different items. I think throwing the rock into the tree to get the apples is where my mind was really blown. I figured I should start off by taking a look at our sprites. One of my favorites was this guy right here. No idea what he's supposed to be, but he looks cool. But what really caught my eye was this piece of cheese and this mouse, because I feel like there's a bone chilling story here just waiting to be told. Imagine you are a piece of cheese trapped in a maze with a hungry, hungry mouse hunting you down. I just started working in Godot for the first time, so I figured it would be good to stick to something pretty simple that I knew I could actually get done in two days. So I put my cheese into a new project and created some simple grid movement. Then I added these dungeon looking tiles into a tile map to put together a simple environment with collisions. Then I gave our mouse pathfinding so it follows the player and built a much bigger maze for it to chase you around in. But there is nothing scary about this. So I used my expert photoshopping skills to make this terrifying jump scare image of your own body being ripped to shreds. And to keep the low bit theme of the art pack, I found some NES and Game Boy inspired horror sounds that are a little much on the ears, but really ended up tying together what I had so far. Here's what plays when you're being chased. And then here's what will play in the jump scare. I'm very sorry to your ears. Then I added a spotlight effect around the player to limit your vision. That is literally just a giant black image with a hole in it to add some challenge and make things even more spooky. But now you're probably wondering, 
how do you actually beat this game? So taking inspiration from games like Slender or Baldi's Basics, or pretty much any game that gave me childhood trauma, you have to collect objects scattered around the maze to escape. Specifically, eight vials of human blood that will allow you to transform back into your human form. I took this potion thing from the art pack and colored it red to look like blood, hid them throughout the map with a little UI indicator to see what was left, and created a win sequence with some dialogue once you've collected them all. Then I made another dialogue sequence for the game's intro, threw in a bit more sounds for things like collecting items, and the game was done. It's pretty simple, but I think it's pretty fun. It has some cute, silly dialogue, but we'll see what the others think of it. Uh, loud. Okay, I'm cheese. The mouse is very hungry. Collect human blood to return to your original form. All right, that's a big jump there. All right, good luck. All right, cool. I like the style here. Okay, arrow keys. The movement's a little weird. You're like locked to the grid, so it's kind of hard to like rapidly move out of the way or something. This is horrifying, dude. I I'm not sure if I can avoid the, the mouse if I'm trying to get these bloods. I don't want to be a cheese. I'm a little zoomed out here. I think uh, he didn't account for very high resolution monitors. So I'm able to see edges I'm not supposed to. Like I can see that there's blood there. Okay, well, I'll just try to pretend like I didn't know that. Oh my God. This is a survival horror masterpiece. This is like slender, but if it was blood and cheese instead. I think I just have to keep running. Ah, uh, yeah, you can't really outrun it. I don't even, is there any way that I can like, am supposed to know where the mouse is? Cause otherwise it's just kind of like, I don't know, just keep moving, hope he doesn't get you, man. I think I could use a little bit more vision radius. It would be nice if there were like a, a, a tell that the mouse was getting close because right now it's basically, I'm just hoping for the best. What if I could leave like crumbs of myself to distract the rat? It's just a little too big of an attack radius on it. So I guess there's probably like a pattern I could take that would like guarantee never gets me. What I'm thinking is there is a route that you're supposed to take and you have to find this through trial and error. Get the mouse like stuck somewhere else trying to pass fine to you. If I'm, if I'm gonna beat this one, I might need to draw a fucking map or something. Eventually I could just learn every route. Okay, I got half of them. Did, the, did I lose the rat? Is he gone? I have no clue. <laughs> I want to go until I can complete it, but I'm not sure I can complete it. I do kind of want to see what happens when I get all the blood. Which sprite do I become? Do I eat the rat? Oh, we'll get this. I'm determined to see the windscreen. Might just. I might have to. I might. I might be defeated by the rat. This might be. This might just be my fate to be a delicious uh, snack for this little little mouse. Oh no. Okay. That's evil. Okay, I have seven. I just have to get one more. I should have this. Oh, there it is. Okay. I beat it. <laughs> All right. Sufficient blood. Actherum Vexata, Corinthia, Zol. Okay, whatever. I am now a chicken. Huh? Did I accidentally put chicken blood in those vials? Definitely not human blood. Anyways, you did it. You beat the game. Apologies for the chicken mishap. I'm just going to shut this window now. That was hard. You guys are so creative. I never would have thought to make like a survival horror game. Um, I like the concept. Shadow could be a little bit bigger and the rat could be a little more forgiving. I think all this needs a little bit of polish. But otherwise, cool idea and concept. I liked it. If you enjoy my videos and you'd like to support me, check out my game art course where I teach the techniques I use to make 2D and 3D art for my games. Link in the description along with a 50% off coupon that's valid for the next five days. I set up a time left timer and started writing a few ideas in my notebook until I found one I liked. The idea is a top-down 2D shooter where you play as a spellcaster. Spells are made up of two words that affect the projectile type and firing pattern respectively. After setting up a basic top-down project and chopping up the sprite sheet into a bunch of 16 by 16 chunks and cutting out all the tiles I was sure I wouldn't use, I sliced the text from the tiles that image into little gibberish words and used resources to save and load all the unique spell info for each one, with various projectile types and granular control over how each spell affects what properties. I'm left with about 2,000 spell combinations. I added some enemy dudes who are basically like the player and that they can have up to two words in a spell. You get more words by beating these guys up. Later I added a system where they take more damage when they run out of words. The game needed a ground texture as a reference point for your movement. This is tricky with such abstract textures. I decided on a solution using tile maps and parallax backgrounds. I added a binary kill counter at the top and another kill counter shown a decimal when you die with this cool little LCD display effect. Here's what that scene looks like.
Most of the game is done at this point. A lot of time now goes to playtesting and adjustments for performance and balance. Later I implemented a pool for bullets as instantiation was slow. I usually reach for JFXR to make sound effects for my games. While technically less powerful than BFXR, there's a crunchy quality to this thing that I like. Like usual, I made the background music in Renoise using hand-drawn sample instruments. I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. I've also been making use of this Kanban add-on for Gutto to keep track of my progress. Mostly polished from here on. As it turns out, for some reason Gutto had been drawing each tile individually instead of batching, causing about 30,000 draw calls per frame. I dealt with this for the majority of development, thinking it was my own code causing problems until I looked at the monitors. After replacing it with a prettier, shader based background, it was reduced to about 100 draw calls. And the time's up. Working on a project with such severe restrictions was a challenge especially since I decided to use a tile set in a more restrictive way. I did like the non-consecutive nature of the jam, though it did take me a while to get started. For those interested more in how I made this, you can find the project source from the itch page. Later. Oh, this looks sweet already. All right, so some kind of top-down shooter. Okay, I'm, uh, we're in very different vibes immediately. What the hell am I fighting though? What even is this? I'm in some kind of glitch hell. This is sweet. Okay, wait, I really like this like kind of glitchy art style. This is a very funny use of the assets also. Nice audio design. Everything about this is so clean. I love the, I love the parallax background. It's pretty cool. Just like parallaxing feels really nice for like a simple graphical effect. The game juice is really there. Okay, this is cool. So we have to shoot these things and I think they drop words that we can collect. Like this, that, that's a word that I could probably collect if I was slightly better at video games. Oh, there's upgrades. These guys drop upgrades, I think. There's a, are my, are my guns my life? What a commentary. Okay, so do you have whatever that is? A blue word? You don't have anything, you're worthless? Okay. You have first word is projectile, second is firing pattern. Oh, this one is great. It's like a machine gun. Woo! Man, they're just everywhere. Okay, so I have the shotgun effect, I guess. Can I get another one? Okay, there we go. Faster fire rate. Am I doing more damage? Amazing video game skills. This one's cool. It like sprays them out. Okay, once you have two words, that is where you can start racking up a good score, bro. Ooh, okay. I like it. I like it. This is where I can start dominating. Once you have two words. Oh, right click switches weapons. That's cool. What is going on? I love that you can combine that. Like, there's there's probably so many different combinations of words between the um, attack patterns and the projectiles. Okay, so now they're fast burst homing missiles. And if I go the other way, it just fires forever, but it's like kind of slow. Terse. First row, rotors? <laughs> this is beautiful. I love this game. I love this game now. Oh, this is so satisfying. I don't even care to try out the other spells. This is like, this is so satisfying now. Just, just absolutely destroying, knocking out everything in my path. Oh, what is that? Man. Oh my God. That is, oh, that is hard to look at though. This is, this is so satisfying. I could do this all day. I'm invincible now, nothing. Nothing can destroy me. I went from being probably the worst player at this game in the world to being being just I'm just a god now. I'm a god. I don't I don't know how close or far I am from anything. I'm just trying to survive, man. None of these guys stand a chance against me. Just a fucking onslaught of pixels. I've truly become a god. Nothing can stop me. Alright, I'm dead. Alright. What what is this? Twenty six? Oh, that's how many kills I got, I think. 108. I cannot, I cannot complain about that. My my target was 50. We we doubled that. Pure skill. I definitely did not get lucky. That was pure pure skill only. Oh, they're like oh 129. Is that my high score. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of uh, terrifying how they're gathering around my death location. All right, that was a cool endless shooter. I do actually like the visuals a lot, but um, I could use some more substance. I think for like a long term play. That was sweet. I could get addicted to that game. GG.
A while back, I started learning about the history of astronomy and how it was used in ancient civilizations, and I wanted to try making a game based off of that. So I started by making a simple world simulation that has a day-night cycle and all four seasons. For the ground, I used variations of tiles to show the change of seasons. I also added some weather effects like snow and rain, which uses this fence post sprite, and a solar eclipse that happens once a year. For that, I just clip a black circle onto the sun sprite and move it across. Then I needed some gameplay. I wanted a way to measure the length of the sun's shadow and notice there was a sundial sprite. So I added that and made a basic sundial UI for it that shows the sun's shadow length during the day. I also added a notepad where you can take notes. Then I added a prediction mechanic. With this, you can predict what will happen the next day. The summer or winter solstice, which are when the sun's shadow is shortest or longest during the year. The first rains of spring, which happens a different day every spring, but with a predictable pattern, and the solar eclipse, which happens a different day every year, but with the same offset, for example, two days earlier every year. And this offset is randomly chosen at the start of the game. To win the game, you'll have to successfully predict each of these events twice in a row to show that you understand when they happen. With gameplay done, I added some sound effects and music, and used this farm sprite to make a UI theme. And the game was done. Holy crap. That's a lot of words. This is interesting. I've never seen gameplay like this before. I've never played a game like this before. Okay, so it seems like we sort of have to figure out a bit of a puzzle. It's a pretty high concept. I can appreciate that. So we should probably start by, we can write down the first shadow length here. So I'll say 8.7. And then these, okay, so you can use these to speed up, which is quite nice. I'm totally lost, I'm sorry. <laughs> but how do I know what day it is currently? How long is a year? Maybe it, it's reflected in the, um, the tiles? Yeah, okay, I see now. Sort of. It, there's like not a lot to this, but I'm just like so like blindsided by the concept. I'm just like not sure how to approach this at all. Just record days. So this seems to be more or less a game of memorization, uh, unless I, I totally have it wrong. Like right now, I'm, I'm just looking at what the measurements are so I can look at the relative measurements later. I'm not sure if it's the same every year. Okay, so I think this is our full year mapped out in our notepad. So I think we have all the information we need now. We just need to do it on the right days. So now we can start to cast predictions, I think, so. 7.0. So let's see if the next prediction is the summer solstice. So you cast a prediction, summer solstice, and it was the eclipse. So we had another eclipse right here. I like this because I noticed, you know, there's a huge variety of like plant tiles, for lack of a better word, and they accounted for every season. So yes, we're figuring this out. We are putting the pieces together of this puzzle. I've fucked up big time. I think I've lost this now. Was I wrong? I think I might have been wrong. Man, I'm getting so exposed right now for not knowing how seasons work. This is actually such a cool game. I've never played anything like this, like, at all. What? Are you serious? Someone explain this to me. So, do I have to do it twice in a row or just twice? I'm not sure if it's keeping track of the whole in a row thing. I think that might be a fib. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Fuck. Yes. Alright. <laughs> We're getting there. I don't know how I'm figuring this out. I'm struggling to see the pattern. Or yeah, no solar eclipse today. And I'm just gonna observe. Dude, so many years of my life down the drain. Just watching the fucking the celestial bodies. Could be worse ways to spend it though. Come on, yeah. All right, and then tomorrow. All right, I'm getting it. What? Okay, I get it. No, I don't get it. <laughs> and now we predict our final solar eclipse. We just need the first rains now. All right. Now all I need to get this is the solstice. Let's see if we beat the game hopefully oh let's go yes oh finally i've done it you win congratulations on another successful calendar developed uh, all in a fucking like two decades work don't thank me i really enjoyed it it's like a really cool puzzle to have to map out a calendar it's quite challenging at least for me in my my tiny little smooth brain 
very, very inspired direction to take a little mini game. Yeah, I rather like the use of the different season elements that were present in the original tile set. The lighting with the day and night cycle, I think, really ties this together. And the uh, sundial is a really creative choice. I feel like this whole game was predicated on just seeing the sundial, and I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, good stuff. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Ripsler, Polymars, and Ivy Sly for joining. Be sure to follow all of them. You can find links to their socials in the description. 